okay today we are going to demonstrate you the liver this is liver and it is the largest gland in the human body it has its weight is approximately 1500 grams and it is a central metabolic station and the clearing house of the body now uh, as far as the anatomy is concerned uh, we must know how to hold the liver in the anatomical position so this is the anatomical position of the liver and uh, what is the criteria you must remember this is the anterior surface you, and this is the posterior surface of the liver you must in order to hold the liver in the anatomical position you must keep the opening of the inferior vena cava this is the opening of the inferior vena cava vertical and posteriorly if i will take this like hold liver like this it will come anteriorly so you must keep it posteriorly and uh, vertical so this is the anatomical position of the liver now what are the uh, features liver has got uh, five surfaces and uh, only one border this sharp margin you are seeing this is the inferior border of the liver this sharp border this is the inferior border of the liver actually it is this border is separating the anterior uh, anterior surface of the liver from the posterior and or the visceral surface so you must remember, uh, keep in mind this sharp inferior border which is separating the anterior surface of the liver from the visceral surface. So this hole is the anterior surface of the liver. This complete is the anterior surface of the liver. Anterior surface. This is the right surface of the liver. You can uh, clearly appreciate the coastal impressions these are the coastal impressions the coastal impressions are from 7th to 11th rib so these are the coastal impressions on the liver this is the superior surface of the liver this is the superior surface this complete one is the superior surface of the liver now the posterior surface this is the posterior surface of the liver you can appreciate the posterior surface in the direction of the probe this is the posterior surface of the liver and this complete rest of the surface is the inferior surface uh, with, uh, inferior surface of the liver this complete is the inferior surface of the liver this posterior surface and the inferior surface is collectively called the visceral surface of the liver since it is in connection with the visceras so we are calling it the visceral surface now uh, some important uh, aspects about the lobes of the liver liver is divided into two lobes the right one and the left one this smaller is the left lobe of the liver this smaller and the larger one is the right lobe of the liver this is the right lobe of the liver they are divided into two uh, by uh, the fissures which you can appreciate on the posterior surface or visceral surface of the liver. This is the fissure in which ligamentum teres hepatis is entering. This is the fissure. This one. This is the fissure. This is the fissure for ligamentum teres hepatis and uh, this is the porta hepatis of the liver and this uh, here is another fissure above this is the another fissure this is the fissure for ligamentum venosum these two fissures are dividing liver into two loops so you can now appreciate the right and the left loop between these two fissures this is the left loop of the liver and this is the right loop of the liver so these two fissures are dividing liver into two loops now uh, there are some other loops of the liver this this one this loop this is the caudate lobe of the liver this is the caudate lobe and inferiorly this lobe this one that has got four surfaces this is known as the quadrate lobe of the liver this one is the quadrate lobe of the liver so this is the caudate lobe and this is the caudate lobe between the caudate and the caudate lobe this this complete structure or you can say the structures which are entering into the liver they form the porta hepatis 
this com complete area is the porta hepatis of the liver excluding the gall bladder this complete area including the ducts the portal vein openings and the vein in opening for the hepatic artery these the all are forming the porta hepatis sure. now the caudate process actually the caudate lobe is in connection with the right lobe of the liver through a process, process that we call uh, that we call the caudate process see the, this is the caudate process this area it is the caudate process it is connecting the caudate lobe of the liver to the right side and above here you can appreciate another process this is the papillary process it is separating from the caudate lobe by this fissure this is the papillary process now the porta hepatis you can clearly appreciate the openings in the porta hepatis first of all the openings for the bile duct this is the cystic duct and this is the hepatic duct these two ducts together are collectively making the common bile duct they will go further they will join together and they will form the common bile duct entering into the second part of the duodenum now behind this these are the two openings these are the two openings for the portal for the portal vein see these are the two openings this is the left opening in which my probe is going and this is the right right and left opening for the portal vein theek hai now uh, there is also the uh, hepatic artery or this is the opening for the hepatic artery this one this is separating from the opening of portal vein this is the opening for the hepatic artery now uh, structures these are the structures which are entering the which are making the porta hepatis of the liver now i will show you the ligamentum teres uh, and the falciform ligament this is the flap you know in the flap you can clearly appreciate this a cord is running this is a cord this cord is the ligamentum teres hepatis and the uh, flap in which it is running this anterior one it is the falciform ligament this flap is the falciform ligament flap and this cord like structure is the ligamentum teres hepatis now i will show you whole ligamentum teres uh, uh, sorry the falciform ligament is going to envelop the liver and how the bare areas are going to form this is the anatomical position of the liver you know this is the falciform ligament it is connected to the umbilicus and uh, it runs and ascends upward and enters the liver so this is the flap for the falciform ligament it will extend up in the median uh, just uh, a bit left to the median plane and it will ascend up in the liver and as it will reach the superior aspect it will split into two parts the right one uh, the left one and the right one the right one will go towards the right side and it will form the right coronary ligament this one is the right coronary ligament because it is in connection with the diaphragm so it is the right coronary ligament and the left one will go towards the left side and it will form the left coronary ligaments now uh, what are the triangular ligaments you know this is going upward in the through the anterior surface and then dividing into right and left parts similar is the case for the inferior uh, for the di uh, inferior surface and the visceral uh, surface now it will also uh, go in these fissures and it will also divide into right and left parts on the right side the, this ligament will after entering the fissure it will ascend and it will divide into right and left parts like the in the in the right lobe it will divide like this it will go above the gall bladder it will not cover the gall bladder inferiorly it will ascend, uh, uh, go above the gall bladder and after going above the gall bladder it will completely cover the visceral surface of the right liver and then after it has completely covered the visceral surface of the right liver from posterior side this flap and from anterior side the flap of the coronary ligament 
both of these flaps will meet and like you you will uh, 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 imagine this meeting in the direction of my fingers like this is the coronary ligament from the anterior side and this is the flap from the posterior side these both flaps will now meet like this you are watching this will leave me like this like this and in the between the um, my fingers the area which is not covered by the falciform ligament this is the bare area this area is uh, is being represented between my fingers this is the bare area it is not covered by the flaps of falciform ligament and this structure that my uh, index fingers are forming these are this is the right triangular ligament this structure is the right triangular ligament similar is the case for left side a flap from posterior side and anterior side they will unite and they will form the left triangular ligament this is the left triangular ligament and uh, in the, on the left side there is no bare area since it is completely covering the left lobe of the liver so there will be no bare area uh, similarly there is a bare area on the superior surface and there is also a bare area here in uh, on the posterior aspect of the gall bladder this is the uh, the impression for the gall bladder this area is also not covered by the peritoneum so this is also a bare area this area is not covered by peritoneum now what are the impressions we must see the impressions on the liver on the visceral surface of the liver you can clearly appreciate numerous impressions these are the impressions on the visceral surface now on the right side we have first impression is the this impression this is the impression for the right kidney this impression is for the right kidney and above this there is another impression this this is the impression for the right suprarenal gland right kidney and right suprarenal gland similarly there is there are some impressions here these are the impressions these two impressions the, the these impressions are the impressions of the right colic flexure these two impressions are the impressions for the right colic flexure here is another impression this impression this is the impression for the second part of duodenum this is the impression for the second part of duodenum and similar there is another impression on the quadrate loop this impression this is the impression for the first part of duodenum and this is the impression for the gall bladder so this was these were the these were the impressions on the right side and similar is uh, impressions for the left side this is the oblique impression you uh, you are watching this impression is the impression for the stomach mainly the fundus this is the impression for the stomach and this impression this one this is the impression for the esophagus this is very it is not very clear but there is forming an impression a dip, a dip furrow here this is the impression for esophagus and this is the impression for stomach also an impression on the superior aspect of the liver this impression is the you know they, there is a raised area on the left side and raised area on the right side between these two raised area there is here is an impression this impression this is the cardiac impression here heart is in uh, contact with the diaphragm and diaphragm it is putting pressure on the liver therefore this impression is being formed here this is the cardiac impression of the liver there is an impression there are some impressions on the right side as well these impressions are for the costal margin uh, the ribs uh, from 7 to 11th ribs are actually coming in contact with this uh, right surface of the liver uh we are dividing the right uh, surface into three parts upper one third middle uh, to uh, one third and lower one third in the upper one third uh, the uh, the relations of the right surface with the structures are uh, the diaphragm uh, the right uh, the right lung and its pleura in the middle one third the middle one third uh, the the uh, uh, the structures which are in contact with the right surface of the liver are the diaphragm uh, costo diaphragmatic recess of the lung and the diaphragm and in the lower one third the structures which are in contact with the liver is only the diaphragm so these are the three parts of the right surface with respect to their relations in the upper third the right lung with its pleura and diaphragm in the middle third the costo diaphragmatic recess of the lung with the diaphragm and in the lower third it is solely diaphragm so these are the three structures
स्ट्रक्चर दैट वॉज लेफ्ट वॉज द ट्यूब्रॉसिटी दैट इज फॉर्म ऑन द लेफ्ट लोब ऑफ द लिवर ऑन द डायफ्रेगमेटिक सर्फेस यू नो दिस इज द फिशर फॉर लिगामेंटम विनोजम दिस वन एंड दिस इज द लेफ्ट लोब ऑफ द लिवर यू आर एप्रिसिएटिंग अ ट्यूब्रॉसिटी दिस दिस रेज एरिया दिस रेज एरिया इज नोन एज द ट्यूबर ओमेंटेल या ओमेंटल ट्यूब्रॉसिटी this area is the tuber omentum uh, you know uh, when liver when blood flows into the sinusoids of the liver after it has flowed by the portal veins it comes into inferior vena cava so it comes through the openings of the hepatic veins in the inferior vena cava if you look closely it is the left side there are two openings of, uh, on the left side there are two openings on the left side one the opening is this opening flash mark flash these are the two openings one opening is here and one opening is here these two openings are the openings of the hepatic veins openings of the hepatic veins and they are also known as the portal canals their specific name is the portal canal and similar uh, one opening is on the right side this one um, you know the blood uh, you can also see the blood this is the blood in this opening this is the opening for the right right lobe like opening for the hepatic vein on the right side